I'm gonna go out and see if I can find some mushrooms or some other cool little macro subjects today. Here last Out week here. and and all I really saw was stems. I didn't see any capped mushrooms. So I figured well it's gonna rain again so I'll come back this week and sure enough here's a bunch of little and I'm not a mushroom expert. I, I barely know the first thing about mushrooms. But uh they, they make great you know macro subjects to photograph and they're and they're easy to do and that's what I want to show. I want to show that that it's it's not really hard to come out with a flashlight or a speed light or a uh, a mono light or whatever it is you want to bring and get some really cool shots of some some mushrooms uh, These are these are a little small and low to the ground. I don't really feel like getting on my belly right now for these uh, I'll find some uh, Really cool ones. I'll keep walking up the trail. I Did happen to find these here and I like these for a few reasons There's three of them. They're varying sizes <clears throat> And this rock is here and I went and landscaped a little bit and pulled a few little distracting things out of here. But uh, I do I do like this. And down at a low angle, we'll be able to have a nice background. So I've got my uh, Canon 100mm 2.8 macro. Uh, with I got this little yoga pad. Some waterproof pants because I'm kneeling down in the mud. Or, or wet ground but you don't need all this stuff I just I just have it because it makes some things a little more comfortable um, yeah and I could buy a platypod it might be really nice and cool and you know but I got one that I I built so I'm just gonna try it out today and, and see uh, if saving my hundred bucks is is a good thing or if I just go on and buy the Pod. or maybe they'd be nice and let me borrow one and do a video uh, check my lens you know and I find and I, and I like it here because it's a dark area I'm out early in the morning I can control the light <laughs> um, I'm just gonna get a quick view through the viewfinder just to see about where I want to line stuff up okay back up my little yoga pad here I'm just gonna turn on my live view mode real quick just to get a kind of rough idea of composition okay live view okay let's take a look and just do a quick find them there's the mushrooms right there so I could see that I need to even rotate my composition here a little bit. And all this is, I just, I, I used an old strobe frame that I had from when I did weddings and and uh, really just put that on this wooden base and it allows me to change my composition pretty quickly uh, going portrait to landscape. And that's a pretty handy tool. Okay. I don't. Um, and, and what I've got here, now you don't have to use this. You can use, you know, I've got this. I've got uh, some flashlights of different color temps. Like I've got tungsten flashlights. I've got uh, LED flashlights. Each one provides its own different color temp and creates a different mood for, for your macro. But I find what I want to use and I go to most often is, is a uh, speed light or this here is one of my lights that I use for portraits, it's, a, it's Evolved uh, by Flashpoint 200. Uh, really awesome little portable uh, flash. This thing is just inc incredible. I really love how small, how easy it is to use. And I've got it in this Bowens mount uh, fitted with a, with a snoot. And the reason I have it on the Bowens mount is, well, so I can put a snoot on there, modifiers, but, but, um, it also allows me to uh, f light this a few different ways. I can I can put my my uh, wireless transmitter on there and set this on a stand, and it'll fire that way. Or uh, I can hand hold it like this, and I'll be able to manually fire this off at different angles and and light this mushroom scene uh in a really unique way and so that's what i'm gonna end up doing today but any anyhow i've got i got this evolve uh 200 it's on a bowens mount fitted with a snoot and there is a grid uh in there it just 
prevents light spill from going off in all the different directions that I that I don't uh, want light to go into. Um, and this once again is an awesome little light to have. have. I have got also with me a light meter. Now you don't have to have this. Um, you can use the one in the camera. Let me turn this uh, live view off for my battery dies. I have six batteries with me, but we never know. Um, you don't have to have a, a light meter for this. You can use the one in the camera. Um, and if I do use the one in the camera, I, I usually put it on like uh, evaluative or, or uh, you know, center weighted average. But but the, the reason I want to use this uh, is I want to get an ambient light falling on the scene. And then I'm going to underexpose that uh, by, you know, a stop or two stops. And then I'm going to light it with the flash. And you're going to see that it makes the mushrooms kind of glow almost and look uh, really really neat uh, what else do i have i do have a tripod with me but um i'm not going to use this one right now because even though it opens flat it will not get near as low as this so let's go ahead and, and set this stuff up i'll show you what i do um <clears throat> let me turn this on turn it on and uh we're gonna get take it let's go over here to my settings and i want to go to shutter speed let's get a quick so at f18 it's a two and a half second shutter speed and what i'm going to do i'm just going to real quick i'm just going to go to my camera and i'm going to go and that's at uh f 2.5 or no i mean uh at uh, f18 and, and that's where about I want to stay because any higher than that any if I stop down any more then you run into dust spots and diffraction and different annoying issues so let's just go down here to two and a half seconds and see what type of scene I get and what I'm doing there's two and a half and let me change my I was shooting some different yesterday I'm on AI, AI servo here I'm on one shot and then I'm gonna go over here to my uh, timer uh, and give it a 10 second timer um, and let's just shoot that I th uh, matter on this shot. This is just a real quick exposure setting to see what the meter, if, if, if we're in the ballpark of where we need to be. And yeah, we are. I've got a good histogram. I've got information in the fifth panel of the histogram. Uh, everything looks good. Okay. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my transmitter on here. Make sure I'm on channel B. I'm going to go down to 132nd. And the, re and the and I arrive at 132nd because I look at my my image on the back of the screen and I look at the um, histogram. So let's go to 132nd. Okay. Now since I've touched the camera a little bit, let's go back here into live view and make sure really quickly that my focus hasn't changed. Because any slightest movement on here is going to really change the focus, the sharpness. Okay. We'll give things a second to simmer down so nothing's moving. Transmitter's on channel B. Evolve 200 on channel B. Remember, I don't have much time to light this, so my reflector is going to help me do that because I'm going to side light this. I've got this on 10 seconds. Okay, I'm going to put this over here like this. I've got the grid on here, it's going to prevent light spill. And the snoot, it's going to really. There we go. Now let's take a look and see. Ooh, that's nice looking. Ooh. What I'm looking for in my viewfinder. Highlights and shadows, nothing blown out, no blinkies. That's good. Now, let me bring this up and we'll take a look at the image. I don't know how well a job the GoPro will do at showing this. But we've got a really cool looking scene here. One second exposure, F18. Let me zoom in on these mushrooms and take a look. Got some good sharpness in there. Okay. 
And those are nice. I like those. This is the first one I did. I lit it from the side and I really like side lighting. It really shows off the texture of the mushroom or the subject. Especially in, like when I do, ah, look at this. We got a little spider in there and you can see his shadow on the stem. How incredible is that? Another little bug right there on the bottom. This stuff is incredible, man. I mean, just to come out here and here you go, look, you got just a really cool little scene. Okay. Really nice. I really scored on this little guy right here. Now I'm being conscious of my background. I want this green and a little of the black uh, color of the leaf to just get completely blurred out into oblivion. And what I'm doing here is I've set up and I've used two extension tubes and I don't know that I'm going to stay with this because it makes the depth of field between the stem and the cap, you know, one is going to be blurry and one is going to be sharp. So what I may end up doing, I really love the composition of this and you can see here, it's just really, really dreamy and, and fairy-like. I really like that. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an extension tube out uh, and that way I get a little more depth of field out of it. Um, so uh, my my settings on this, I just use the evaluative metering in the, uh, or actually I use a center weighted average in, in, in the camera uh, meter. And it, it gave me uh, at F18 one second. Um, and, and that gives me a pretty decent image. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, underexpose the background. So instead of one second, I'm going to go over here uh, to, let's see, we'll do a third of a second. Let's take a shot and see. I'm on 10 second timer mode, just like I, you know, I've been using the timer mode. Uh, it gives me time to move around. Um, okay, now I like uh, I like that uh, third of a second. So what I'm going to do? So now, what I'm going to do now that I, that I've got my basic exposure and I've already in live view. I've already sharpened. Uh, I've already zoomed in on the cap, and I determined that there's enough depth of field between the the distance of the rim of the cap and the stem that it's going to be acceptable. So what we'll do is before I have to change batteries, that live view takes the battery power right down. What I'll do is I'm going to grab my my Evolve light. And my reflector. And I'm going to go ahead and fire a shot off. While I underexpose the background. Now i got 10 seconds. i got to turn this light on. There we go. Okay. And that gives some good directional lighting uh, and it underexposes the background and it exposes the foreground.